Dan here at the ED Speed Shop, and today we're going to talk about the best vehicle I've ever bought and how I'm going to treat it so poorly because <laughs> I ordered the wrong bits. Come on. I bought brand new drill bits too, but I think I'd use those. So, this truck. We'll talk about how awesome it is in a second, but in the meantime... Oh, there we go. We got our bleeding at the top. We might just have brakes being for a test drive night. Dump run? Yeah, romance. Um, so this truck had a bit of a brake drag situation. While we were towing a bunch of stuff back and forth. And then we kept towing. Because <laughs> we were busy. <laughs> we had stuff to do. Um, so anyway... That was all fine and good. So I was like, it was either going to be a caliper, a junked up caliper, or a uh, or a brake line. And uh, I was like, yeah, whatever. It kind of is what it is there. So it was cheap. I think a caliper was like, I don't know, 60 bucks, and the brake line was 25 or something. And uh, I mean, the way to kind of, oh, this is rusty, to kind of... Uh, diagnose would be when the brake's sticking <clears throat> if you like release the bleeder then obviously it would be uh, a line would be holding fluid which is very common on these trucks the line inside just kind of collapses and then it flows one way because it's under pressure then the way back it's kind of not as happy and otherwise it's probably the caliper so that's all fine and good now so wait what it was the caliper so I just replaced both. Oh. Just because, uh, you know what? I was gonna get to it and diagnose it and screw around, but it was one of those things. It was like sixty bucks, so I just bought it. Now that being said, you're not really supposed to replace just one caliper at a time and all sorts of things like that. But. So we're replacing the other one too, right? Yeah, we'll do that one off camera. So, anyway, that's kind of what happened there. Um, anyways, we were in on our little road trip and I ordered the parts just while I was, you know, in bed. And I had ordered... <laughs> Very romantic. <laughs> well, you know me. <laughs> Anyways, I ordered the <laughs> them wrong. I ordered the right caliper, but the wrong uh, hose. So I ordered a uh, passenger side brake hose. So I had to do a little modification. I had to bend this line a little, which is fine. And then I had to bend this bracket, which is also fine. And then I used this bracket upside down, bent it all up, and, and it's fine. It's fine? It's a hydraulic hose, it'll be fine. Um, so we got that, and actually it was- uh, Well, it better be fine. We're it had moving to California in two weeks. <laughs> I don't think they allow trucks like this in California. Oh, well, it's what too are we awesome. Do with it then? <sighs> we'll probably just have to leave it on the way in Nebraska. So, uh, a little rinky dinky, but uh, she's fine now. So, we got the uh, got the new line on. Oh, yeah, there's still lots of fluid in there. We're good. We'll just see. Yes. Plastic. It's just a reservoir, yeah. Let's see if we can just kind of pump this up. Oh yeah, there we go. May have to bleed it a little. Oh, well, maybe not. I need to push the piston in there. I think we should be good. We might as well just, uh, you know, hop in there and pump it a few times, and I'll just. Give her a bleed. I actually think when I took this caliper off, it almost seemed like uh, one piston was out more than the other. I don't know if that's how they fail or not. Where did I put? Okay, pop it three times and hold it. Holding. It fell down. A little bit of air in there, so we should be good. Okay, let it go. Hit it. Now just hold it. Holding. So there we go. We have brakes. It didn't fall down. 
bleed it? Yeah, I didn't bleed it. Oh, okay. I'm sure it was. We gravity bled it and all that. So there you go. Let's uh, put the wheel back on this old girl. Jeez, Danielle, no gunshots on TV. Well, you got all these plastic bags. Scared me. <laughs> I'm a manly man. I looked embarrassed on the internet. Oh. You know what I'm going to do is probably put a zip tie on this. Because that'll make life better. It's actually pretty organized in here. The cardboard holder. Those are fenders. Just so you know. So I just had a bunch of zip ties. Where were they? They were in this pile of garbage. Did I leave them in the garbage? <clears throat> oh, I'll look for them. You gotta look for them, is what I meant to say. Oh, I see. You're good at finding things. Where were the zip ties, Dan? They're in the pile of garbage. Danielle. How where long else did would it they take be? take Danielle to find them. Hours? No. It's dark out now. As soon as I turned the camera off, I said, Aren't that them? Aren't that them? Is that how you talk? Aren't that them? <laughs> I spent a lot of time in Alberta. We did. Okay. Picked up the local language. Uh, I think that might be racist. I don't think you can say that. Is it? I don't know. Albertans? Oh, well, I was also lazy and I didn't change this little bracket here. I just changed the caliper. But my defense also didn't change the brake pads and we used the wrong brake line. Once again, this is your friendly reminder that DD Speed Shop is not a how to channel, it is a how to get things done channel. We are not liable for anything you copy. I gotta grease this done? thing too, because it's, uh, oh, and it's got actually an axle boot ripped, which now would have been the time to change the uh, tire axle for like eight bucks, but I'm sure I'll remember to do that later. Remember and do are two different things. Let's get this thing on. <laughs> Frig off, Danielle. Hey, can I torque those? Well, funny story about that. <laughs> uh -huh. I left my impact in the 55 Chevrolet. Well, that with... doesn't matter because the 55 Chevrolet is just in the storage locker. Exactly. But that's not here. <laughs> oh, right. So, at this point... I'm not driving 15 minutes, so I had to break these loose by hand, and then we use the little guy. But honestly, the little guy's probably all you need to tighten them. Do you see another uh, lug nut? Or are we going 7 8 is good? No. Nope. 7 8 Oh yeah, and I have the wrong socket. There's a few wrong things here. Did you find it? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Don't worry, we'll hit this with the torque wrench after the camera goes off. I promise. It's only the front wheel. I think this is probably good to like 120 foot pounds, this thing. Ooh. That oh, might be on there forever. <laughs> Wait, hang on, I got a hammer. I think we're good. You want to pump that up? Ugh. Yeah, it's heavy. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Okay, eight more. I'm literally using all of my strength. Yeah. And I'm only using one hand. Okay, you can drop her down. Oh. Can you hold this? Yeah, just drop it down. Hit left. I'm going left. <laughs> I can't turn it. <laughs> What's going on here, muscles? Oh, I was just talking about how awesome this truck cake. Well, he, come on. <laughs> I can't turn it. <clears throat> You're strong. Right? Yeah. All right, this thing hasn't run in quite a while. But, uh, well, actually, we got to go. Someone stole my trailer lights out of this thing. 
So we gotta go to Canadian Tire and get some new ones. Look at that. This thing probably hasn't started. Oh yeah, the door, the windows. This thing probably hasn't run in three weeks, give or take. So there we go. I think the brakes feel like. Because the last time, uh, I went right to the floor there. The car for the newbies. We may have to. Well, maybe that's fine. Service tire monitor. Mint. Okay, we'll let this thing warm up for a little bit. Oh. Uh, the newfies. Like the new record boy. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of garbage here I parked over too. <laughs> okay, let's go throw this stuff out in the dump. Oh, I was also driving into that. That's probably part of the problem too. And we'll be back tomorrow and talk about how awesome this truck is because it starts. Dump run! Oh, ah. Gotcha. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> Dan here. New day speed shop. So it's actually been a couple of days since Danny was out here filling this fluff. But uh, tow truck's running good. We put some miles on it. And is someone whistling? Anyways, I'm just kind of hosing her down a little bit on a lubricant because we actually have to use this thing a bunch. I'm uh, going away for work here. And we gotta get everything kind of moved because it's the end of the year. And I'm probably not gonna be back. Well, we can't enjoy any of the cars or all the cars anyway. So we've got to put a bunch away. We gotta get a bunch picked up. We gotta get a bunch moved. But uh, I think what we we're gonna talk about was how this is like the best truck I've ever bought. Oh yeah. So this year, a lot of people told me this is a dumb purchase or the wrong truck to buy. Don't cough on camera, please, Danielle. But you appreciate it. Um, so it's a 2008-ish, seven, eight, nine, I don't know. Uh, Chevy one ton, four by four, regular cab, long bed, gas, which is what I wanted. And it's a little on the rough side. This is an old fleet vehicle, but uh, for what we use it for, it's absolutely cherry. So I wanted it. Oh, come on. I wanted gas because it sits on the street, sits wherever. It gets cold here in the winter, starts up easy, no issues. A dually would be nice, but uh, around these parts, you can't park a dually on the street overnight. It's one of our stupid bylaw rules, which you could, a lot of guys risk it and all that sort of stuff, but I didn't want to deal with it. So um, I ended up with this thing. And it's been great. It's got uh, just under 10,000 pounds. Uh, GVW, so it can tow a lot. And then when I first, we have a plow for the front. It's easy, even Danny can drive it, no big deal. It's not bad on fuel, we got a six liter in it. And uh, when I first got it, a plan was always a tow truck. I wanted a tow truck. Uh, I had one years ago and I wanted another one, especially now. You had like a real tow truck. A real tow truck, it was a hassle, dually, the whole thing. But now I have, you know, I wanted something that was a little easier to deal with and I could actually drive and enjoy and all that sort of stuff. And uh, so I got this thing and I hunted around and I found an old slide in Holmes Wrecker, which we fabric cobbled together and we used that for better part of a year or two, anyways. It was great. I uh, can't really complain. The only thing is, it did turn the truck more into a tow truck than anything else. It took up a lot of the bed, which was a bit of a hassle. Now I know everyone in the comments, the old trailer, trailer, trailer. I hear you. And you know what? Trailers are great for a lot of people, just not for me. This is way handier, it's easier. Um, a lot of stuff I buy is junk, you know. So, I mean, you can do a lot with the trailer, you can winch stuff, you can do all those things, but this just gets in there, does its thing.
everything. I mean, it acts as a daily driver, which we do all the time, a snow plow and a tow truck, and it has an eight foot bed so we can haul junk around in all in one. So it saves space, insurance, all that sort of stuff. Sure, would a trailer do a lot of things better? Absolutely, if you're doing long haul stuff, uh, if it's a you know decent vehicle, all those things are much easier. David Newburn. If you are a Newburn and you have you know you have aluminum tilt deck trailer money, by all means, I'd end up with some junk wood piece of crap, whatever it is. So there you go. That's what we kind of did. We had that slide in record, and I will say I actually miss it. Looking back, I should have kept it a little bit. Um, it wasn't a lot of money, but I got rid of it. I miss having the boom. So I think having like a more legit tow truck might be handy some days. Because we use it as an engine crane. We use it as a bunch of stuff. We move stuff out of the backyard. I mean, it would, uh, I think I had a 10 or 12,000 pound uh, lift on it. So it would do all sorts of stuff. And it was super handy. It was, however, a hassle to move cars around. Um, it had its ups and downs. It actually, we're just busy around here today. It actually towed better with the sling. I will say it put the weight further ahead and it didn't kind of squat the truck out as much, but you're lying on your back, you're hooking stuff up, you're running chains. It was a bit of a hassle. And ultimately I ended up finding this, uh, kind of like a repo lift. I bought it on marketplace for like a couple of grand or 2,500 bucks. I forget what it was. Ultimately it wasn't a whole lot of dollars. And this is what I wanted originally was this truck. I pulled the back bumper off just so we have a little bit more uh, room so we don't KO the tailgate as many times as possible. <laughs> I've hit it a few times. That's about as far back as you can go. So there are some, don't show it all, the tailgate's beat anyways. So there are some ups and downs to this style lift. Um, real tow trucks have all the stuff kind of in front of the axle. This is all mounted kind of almost like a trailer hitch. So you're pulling everything and it's putting a lot of force on the back of the truck. So it's heavier. It's like having just all the tongue weight, but I mean, it's a one ton truck. That's what it's meant to be meant to be beat on. And that's exactly what this lift is meant for. So we put that on there. When I got it, I, uh, I probably spent another thousand dollars because I plated the entire frame, uh, the whole side of it, top of it, everything. So it's uh, it's double wall. I put big springs on the back. And, all that, and it works good. I had to buy a remote for it as well, which is a few hundred dollars, but it just it just works. These lifts are they're like 10, 12 grand US, so to get it for a couple grand was pretty, I won't say once in a lifetime, but definitely super handy. Anyway, that's the truck, and I love this thing. So it's just been nothing but handy. It does have a trailer hitch on it. We can pull stuff. It's wired for trailer. It has trailer brakes on it. Like it's, It just does it all, and it doesn't complain, and it just works. And uh, the only issue I've had was that one, probably a brake hose screwed up and caused it to kind of drag the front wheel a little bit. But now we're going to go around and pull a bunch of crap around. I will say, if you're going to have a tow truck, people ask me about this all the time. Um, you know, check all the rules and all that sort of stuff. This is a light, light, light duty unit. Um, legally, you can't have a whole lot of weight on the back. But fortunately, we're towing stuff like this, which is half of a car with no motor. So it's fine. You can probably have, I don't know, 1,500, 2,000 pounds on the back of this thing before you're, you know, over the limit. Obviously, it'll tow a bunch more. We have moved stuff around that's been overweight for sure, but nothing, uh, nothing seriously, like just, you know, garage to garage. But the only thing you got to do is mathematically. I mean, if uh, Tri-5 Chevrolet weighs uh, 3,500 pounds, you're only lifting half of it. And if you lift the back half, where there's no motor, what are you lifting, 1,000 pounds, 1,500 pounds? It's really not that crazy. And I mean, it's a work truck. That's exactly what they're meant for. So this has been the best of all the cars I've bought and all the stuff I've done. This is by far the best truck I've ever had. And uh, I want to buy another one. I'd actually like to build a dually one. And I'd like that they do sell ones that have where you can do like a little hydraulic uh, boom in it, which would be the ticket. Because then you could actually move stuff like motors in and out or something like that. Or I thought about putting a little crane inside, but. Are you going to be able to find that in Australia? <sighs> Down under. Yeah, I don't know what they got there. <laughs> Sorry, what? Shrimp and the Bobby. <laughs> Actually, I think on a sh upside down there, they tow it from the front. Like the wreckers on the front of the truck and everything goes backwards, right? It's like the toilet spin backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. There's way too many rules for us to live in Australia for automotive stuff. We would never make it. We barely make it here. <laughs> but yeah, this thing, uh, that's the deal. So. 
If you're thinking about getting a trailer, go for it. This is way more uh, hassle and all sorts of aggravation and everything to get together. But if you want, if if you have two houses side by side, the garages face opposite ways, and you got to move this Chevelle to the other garage twice a month because it makes sense in your brain. That is what you need, or a bunch of you know dumb buddies. Actually, we need all these straps here. We got to tow that car. I don't know that mud bog here right away. I don't have, uh, we have any tow straps in that thing. There you have it. Get yourself a tow truck. Uh, we're gonna, actually we gotta go next door and load it full of tools. So we're gonna go from there. I, at one point I had it set up kind of half service truck, which was super handy. And uh, I never quite put it back that way, which would have been a plan, eh? Instead now we're stealing tools on everything we have to make it work. The DD Speed Shop way. Thanks for watching, and maybe we'll see you over there when we're loading up a bunch of tools.